Hey friends, welcome back to the Sunshine Farm. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey darling, we could get out of town, see the beautiful world of if you've been a subscriber for a long time, you may have noticed that we haven't been around a whole lot, but that's going to change. And if you're new here, welcome. I can't wait to show you how we turned this space that used to be all grass into beautiful, lush, and abundant gardens. Four years ago, I started gardening pretty much for the very first time. Just over there behind me, we tilled up a 30 by 50 plot and it was kind of a mess. We still had beautiful harvest, lots of tomatoes, but I learned that for our soil, where we are in our climate, tilling was kind of a mess. That fall, I learned all about permaculture and no-till methods, and since then, we've just completely transformed our backyard into this oasis that requires a lot less effort on our part. We deal with much less weeds. We really don't water our in-ground gardens at all. Um, and here in upstate New York, everything is really just thriving. So my goal is to speak to that person I was four years ago and help you find options when it comes to gardening. Options that work for you, options that work with nature, alongside nature, to maximize production, increase efficiency, and have a wonderful time in the garden. I also want you to know that you can have a garden like this with zero history of gardening, without spending thousands of dollars. This is only year four here in this space. And I know year four, that sounds like a lot of years, but Gardening is a lifelong journey. So for this to be year four, without tilling up the land, working with the land, having this just beautiful, lush, abundant space, I am amazed by it and I just wanna share it all with you guys. So today we're gonna to walk around my garden. I'm gonna give you guys a tour and I want you to know, I'm gonna be throwing out words that you're maybe going to have no idea what they mean and that's okay. I will share all of these things with you if I haven't already and I'm excited to just kind of open you guys up to things you maybe didn't know about before and if you do know them awesome let's celebrate together all the wonderful ways there are to garden and the beauty that is permaculture gardening so come on let's go check out the garden i'll show you what we have going on here first we're gonna hang out over here in this hugo culture bed now that's one of those words that you might not have any idea what i'm talking about and that's okay hugo culture is basically creating a raised mound using rotted wood it's super cool. I have a couple videos all about how we created this bed here, but let's just take a look at what's going on in this space because this year it's year three and it is so abundant. These wacky things are Egyptian walking onions. They get their name because they literally walk. These crazy seed heads come all the way down and they spread themselves on the ground just like you see the little, little baby ones here. How fun are they? Now I'm gonna use the term perennials and annuals throughout this video. Perennial means that a plant is going to come back year after year. Annual means that it's just one season and done. Tomatoes, peppers, all of those things, annuals, these Egyptian walking onions, these are perennials, meaning you can have onions coming back year after year. You can use the bulbs, but they're most known for using the greens. And they're very fun, very wacky, but they'll come back year after year. They'll spread themselves. You can give them away to friends and family as they spread. They're such a fun plant to have and I highly recommend putting them in your garden. So over here, we have an elderberry tree. This guy, ooh, it's got flower heads, you guys. That's so exciting. Let me show you. So this elderberry shrub tree I planted last spring in the hugo culture bed. And this year it is just spreading, it looks beautiful, and I might even get some elderberries this year, which I'm super excited about. Elderberry is well known for its healing properties for your immune system and promoting a healthy immune system. So people use elderberry syrup to help promote a healthy immune system and ward off colds and infections and things like that. Um, okay, so next to the elderberry, we have a lot of yarrow. You will see yarrow spread throughout my garden. I love yarrow. Not only is it beautiful for cut flower arrangements and just as a beautiful plant in your garden, it's also amazing for the pollinators. The pollinators love the yarrow and it has so many medicinal qualities as well, which I haven't gotten into yet, 
but I do know it has amazing medicinal properties that I can't wait to dive into at a later time. Something new in our garden this year is comfrey. I have comfrey just everywhere. You'll see it right here. Comfrey is a medicinal plant. It is a perennial. It's gonna come back year after year. The pollinators love it and it's an amazing mulch from your, for your garden. You can actually just chop and drop the comfrey and lay it down around your plants and it will send so many nutrients to your plants that it's really gonna love. I have some other fun things in this hookah culture bed. This year I have really worked on transitioning it over to perennials, particularly pollinator friendly plants, um, some medicinal plants, as well as incorporating some annuals like basil, like zinnias, and I have an artichoke plant in here as well. So let me show you guys what that looks like. Here's some echinacea. We have a pollinator friendly, butterfly fun friendly native plant here. Some eggplant down there. Blueberries. This guy looks like it's almost ready. I even have a peony down there. Some nasturtium and zinnias. I've got some sweet potato growing around there. And here's an artichoke. And if you've been around here for a while, you know I love my artichokes. I have grown artichokes in upstate New York here for four years now, three years now. Um, my first year growing, I had no idea what to expect and I actually got fruit. My second year growing, I had a perennial that came back. And then my third year, last year, it came back for a third year. And I had so many artichokes that I was able to harvest, prepare in the kitchen, and then also let go to flower for the pollinators. Artichoke is is a perennial, but it's a tender perennial, meaning that it can have difficulty establishing in some of those colder climates. It did not come back this year, which I kind of expected. We had a day that was down to negative 12 degrees, which is actually colder than our lowest anticipated low. We are zone six in upstate New York, 6A. Down to negative 12, that's considered zone five. So we actually acted colder than our season than we typically do, meaning that some perennials that normally might survive here in the winter did not survive. And that was something I anticipated and it's just kind of a part of climate change and gardening in general. You just have to accept what what mother nature throws at you. So you'll see the hookah culture bed is right there. I have a couple of fruit plants, fruiting plants over there, a pear tree and a gooseberry. And then I have a no dig flower bed over there, which I will show you guys a little bit later. This is the bulk of our garden. We have four beds. So these three, I use primarily for annuals, although I do have some perennial flowers sprinkled in like this yarrow. I have some foxglove. Um, I have some more yarrow over here and some more yarrow over there. I love my yarrow. And then I have annuals sprinkled in throughout, which I will show you guys. And then the fourth bed, this is kind of like a part of our food forest. So I have comfrey and strawberries as ground cover. I have a peach tree. I have different berry bushes and horseradish. I have some lupin blooming over here, some more yarrow, um, and it's just a beautiful food forest. Isn't that lupin just amazing? Oh. It's so gorgeous. I forgot what these flowers are called. I planted them last year and I honestly can't remember. If anybody knows, feel free to shoot it in the comments below. Lots of comfrey. I have this um, plum tree over here. Some blueberries back here and some foxglove. This half bed behind me is actually a medicinal herb and tea garden and I kind of always forget about it. It is one of those beds that hasn't really been taken care of very well and with this last winter being so harsh, it did suffer a little bit. I lost some of my perennials like my lavender. That's okay. I'm going to come into this space and clean it up a little bit but we do have some really cool stuff like valeri valeria? That's not right. I have chives. I have, I do have some peonies in here. Valerian is in here. That's that tall white flower um, going over there. I have some red vein sorrel in there and some other things. But like I said, this area is just kind of not doing so hot. So we'll do a video. We'll go in there. We'll clean it up and I'll share that process with you guys because perennials, they are pretty low maintenance, but even still, you're going to need to be making sure there's not a lot of weed pressure, going in and making sure that things are doing well and replanting as needed. So behind me in this bed, we have some tomatoes and peppers. The tomatoes are starting to finally take off. You'll see them right back there. So we've got tomatoes, we have peppers, we have some foxglove, 
which is beautiful, but also toxic. So be careful where you plant it. I'm definitely not gonna be planting foxglove this close to the house again, because it means I have to watch Malachi, our toddler, very closely in the garden. Um, so we have the tomatoes and then I let these carrots go to seed. I will save the seeds, but I also love having plants going to seed because the pollinators love it. Carrots have a really beautiful flower. It is basically just like Queen Anne's lace, which is like the wild carrot. And so if you're used to seeing Queen Anne's lace and bouquets and things like that, carrot flowers are going to look the same. The pollinators love them. They're beautiful in cut flower arrangements and I can save the seeds. So it's kind of a win-win-win as far as letting these carrots stay in the bed. They're kind of dinky because I planted them a little bit too late last year. So instead of harvesting them for food, I'm going to use them in a different way. Beautiful, aren't they? This area back here is something I'm really excited about this year. This is a Three Sisters garden. So Three Sisters is planting a combination of corn, pole beans, and squash, or some other kind of vining plant as ground cover. So the corn grows up, then you start to plant the beans. The beans climb around the corn using the corn for support, and they also feed nitrogen back to the soil to replace the nitrogen that was lost from the corn. And then the squash, or watermelon, or sweet potatoes in my case, they vine out on the ground, protecting the soil, adding life back to the soil, and keeping weeds from coming up. Three sisters can be traced back to the Haudenosaunee people um, that are actually local to the region that I live in, in Western New York, which is really amazing. And so much gratitude for, um, for those people for sharing the tradition and the education of how to grow this. And so many people are blessed by their knowledge of sharing that. And I'm really excited to see it transform this growing space. So um, something you will learn about permaculture is it, is a lot about working with multiple different types of plants together, incorporating interplanting as plants kind of benefit each other with different things, like whether it's ground cover or nitrogen fixing or adding height and support to other plants. Every plant has a role in the garden ecosystem and you can really maximize that through interplanting. So one thing I did that was kind of fun this year is I actually started my own sweet potato slips using sweet potatoes that we grew in our garden last year. So I took some sweet potatoes, I just put them in some soil, give them a little bit of water, and I let those sweet potatoes grow slips in the months of like February, March, and April. And then when the slips were a few inches tall, I just pinched them off, put them in a cup of water, let them grow some roots, and then I planted them here in the soil. Most of them survived, a few of them did not, and having a barn cat sit on them does not help, so let me just do her way. The horses are coming over to say hi, and I just want you guys to be able to see them in case you've missed seeing them for a while. You itchy? Yeah, I hit some. Hey, Justin. So we have these two horses here, TJ and Justin, a full-size solid paint horse and a miniature horse. Things might be looking a little bit different around here if you haven't been here in a while, because I haven't shared in a while. Um, we no longer have our goats and we only have one flock of chickens and a couple of roosters. That is because we were planning on moving this summer. We're putting that on hold a little bit because we just changed our minds this summer, simple as that. Um, and instead we're just enjoying the farm right now. But because of that, we did make sure our goats and some of our chickens had a really safe long-term home. And luckily we hadn't rehomed the horses yet, so we still get to enjoy them and their presence until we decide kind of what's next. We have our three sisters bed. I just planted this corn just the other day. That's why it hasn't come up yet. So you'll see the, there's f four round areas of corn and the fifth one will go here squash around them and then there's some beans around the corn itself and then over here in this bed i just planted some tomatoes and some peppers on the outside so you'll see those guys are having a little bit of transplant shock because it was a little hotter than anticipated today and i'm going to be planting in some marigolds and cosmos throughout the garden as well this is our garlic patch the garlic is looking beautiful this year you can see nice thick stalks of garlic. I still need to come in and harvest the garlic scapes, which are beautiful and super tasty. Love garlic scapes. Um, but these guys are just looking amazing this year. I even planted some elephant garlic, which is this bad boy right here. Super big. Oh, the stalks on these are so thick. 
Garlic is one of our favorite crops to grow on our property because the soil, our soil is pretty rich, pretty fertile, but it's also very heavy and the garlic seems to really thrive in our soil. So we've had a very easy time growing garlic over the past four years, but we do deal with a really gnarly pest called the leek moth. And this year I figured out an appropriate treatment strategy and got it in advance and it's actually worked out pretty well. I haven't noticed any damage from the leek moth. So I can share more about that in future videos. But our garlic, we don't fertilize it, we don't water it, and we don't weed it. And we pull it every year and it's just beautiful, large cloves. And we have that success through heavy mulching. So this right here, I just took some old tomato steaks and I'm making a little cucumber trellis. I have some cucumbers planted around the base. As you can see, they're just coming up right here. I also have some dahlias. They'll be coming up all throughout the garden, kind of in these empty spaces flowers in here zinnias and cosmos i love cosmos they're so pretty i just love them and some zinnias you'll see everything is starting to look dark green um we had some slug damage and early in the season everything is a little bit n um, nitrogen deficient but now things are starting to come in really nice and dark green i think the nitrogen is starting to feed back into the soil i've got some broccoli in here I have ranunculus. These are just beautiful flowers. I love ranunculus. They're a spring flower, so they'll be done actually pretty soon here, but I've really enjoyed them just in the past week or so. And then I have some fava beans, which are doing really well. They're starting to put off some pods and some peas, which I need to come in and do my first harvest of peas. So the peas are doing really well. They'll only last here for probably a couple more weeks, maybe another month. And then I did plant some beans down at the base so that when the peas are done, the beans will start growing up this trellis and it will be this beautiful bean trellis. There are pole beans on that side that will be filling out as well. Little garden snack. I have some Brussels sprouts I just planted. Some onions in here, a bunch more flowers some potatoes, which are looking really beautiful this year. They're just super healthy. They're about to start flowering in here. And then I have some peonies and more yarrow, just as you can guess. These spaces that you'll see that are open like that is where I've direct seeded things, particularly watermelon, which I direct seeded today. So we'll have some watermelon kind of trailing out over the outside of the beds and through the walkways, which I think is fun. You might notice that there seems to be a lot of empty spaces in this garden this year. And that's because, like I said, we were planning on moving and we changed our minds. So there's a lot of spaces that I've just come in and planted some small starts or have direct seeded. So in the next month or so, it's really going to transform. Um, here is one of those spots where I pulled aside the mulch and I planted like five rows of sunflowers. So this is just gonna be a sunflower bed. I hope it works out okay. Sunflowers can be notoriously difficult to grow because little critters love to eat them as baby seedlings and they love to eat the seeds. So we'll see how that goes, hoping for the best. I've also planted squash at the base of these two trellises here. So we have a lot of squash coming up. I'm gonna try to carefully transplant some of these because I don't think we need six squash on one trellis. I go for two or three per trellis and there's some coming up right now. We have volunteer potatoes in this section and this section which I'm just going to watch carefully and make sure they don't have any signs of disease. And then in here I have some more brussels, some watermelon direct seeded, different kinds of hot peppers. I'm going to come in here and put some radishes in the middle and I haven't decided what I'm putting there yet or on the outside. Some delicata squash right in here that's gonna climb this trellis really beautifully. And I just came in and transplanted some cucumbers in here. I'm having a heck of a time getting anything to grow on this side because there's an ant colony and the ants just keep coming back. So we'll see how it goes. I did read a really awesome tip from someone on Instagram that you can combat ants, like when you have a particularly bad ant problem by getting ants from a different colony and just putting them in near the ants from the other colony and they, their natural territorial instinct kind of makes them disperse, but we couldn't find any other ants to do that with. I have an issue sometimes with ants girdling plants and that's basically when they like suck the juices out of the base of the plant and essentially cut off circulation from the roots to the plant. So your plant just dies. I had that, had that issue with brassicas in the early spring and now I'm having that issue on this trellis. So 
we'll see what happens if I can't get anything to grow on that side I'll just keep planting beans keep planting things until until it works and if it's empty on half of the trellis that's okay. okay so then we come back to the other side over here so that's where the ants issue is and then over here on this side I have pole beans that are gonna climb this bed and I do need to come plant some more pole beans over here the ones that you see here all are just volunteers, so I need to come in and plant the rest of this trellis out with pole beans. This is my asparagus patch. You can see asparagus does this after it's done growing. It ferns out really nicely, super pretty. You just wanna keep it weed free and heavily mulched so that it um, is protected even when it's no longer producing. Since my son Malachi is sleeping, that means I get the first raspberry. Mmm, it's so good. Although I will save one for Chris because they're delicious. And these are the first raspberries of the season. Can you feed it to me? Mm. Is that good? It's so good. They're so tart and delicious. Really tart. It's the service berry here. I don't actually know when the fruits are ready, but I think they get to be blue before, so they're not quite ripe yet. So these three beds where I grow mostly annuals, they are Ruth Stout beds, which means it's a style of gardening that uses composting in place to grow food. So what we compost in place is our rotted hay that came out of our goat pen. The goats basically pooped and peed on it. It sat out in rain, it sat out in all kinds of weather. And then we took it out of the goat pen and put it straight in the garden. Now goats don't have a hot manure, so it's safe to do this, but if you took it out of a horse pen or a cow pen or a pig pen, it would actually need to be composted first before for composting it in the garden. But I really like composting in place because it is easy. It's easy to do and what happens is over the season, you get to see your garden kind of experience more and more abundance as the season progresses because the composting in place creates a slow release fertilization for your plants, which is really cool. So this permaculture perennial bed that I have over here, the food forest where I have strawberries, fruit trees, asparagus, the raspberries, that is a Back to Eden style bed. Back to Eden also uses composting in place, but it uses composting wood chips as the mulch. And for us, what we found is annuals, it's not working so well um, for a variety of reasons. I can share more in future videos, but for perennials, it is working okay. So we like to use it with perennials just because there are no weed seeds in wood chips so we don't have to worry about weeding the wood chips as much whereas with the rotted hay as wonderful it is as it is and as much as we love it it does tend to have more weed seeds which means that grass is growing up where we don't want it and if we left it unchecked it would quickly become like a grass patch essentially but but you can see like our garden does not have tons of weeds and i barely weed so this method really does work for us for keeping the weed pressure really low and reducing our need for watering. We really don't water our in-ground beds. As we head over there, you can see we have an issue with bindweed or morning glory. I'm not sure if this is the weed, the bindweed, or if it's morning glory that the previous owner just planted at some point, but we're working on controlling that. And then you can see all these plants right here. These are all milkweed. So this is the only food source for monarch caterpillars. And so we leave it, we let it, Kind of expand and grow even if it grows into the garden space um, but it's also really beautiful it has beautiful flowers it has beautiful foliage and i love to see the caterpillars and the monarchs on our property okay so last but not least this is the kitchen garden and it goes right up to our back house the back of our house the kitchen garden is one of my favorite spots on our property. I love having a space that I can plant really early in the spring because of the raised beds, they warm up faster. I love this arch, which we're gonna have climbing roses climbing, which they're already starting to grow up a little bit. And I just love the height of the raised beds. It's easy to plant, it's easy to harvest. And they have really good drainage, so if we ever have a ton and ton, a ton and ton, a ton and ton, if we ever have a ton of rain, I don't have to worry about these beds. They do just fine. The in-ground beds with a ton of unexpected rain can be a source of disease and issues like that. This is one of my favorite walks over here. You have milkweed and hostas and some English garden roses, which I love, and the milkweed just sprinkled in. Um, this is kind of a mess back here, but there is a wild mullein plant, which is a medicinal plant native to our area. Then you come into the kitchen garden, which is just loaded, you guys. 
we have beets, um, bok choy that's gone to seed, and I'm just kind of letting it. Um, beets and carrots in here, lots of flowers in here. This black petunia, which I thought was so cool. Um, some nasturtiums spilling out the sides and snapdragons. The spinach, which is past its prime. I actually need to chop, chop it and use it as mulch because it is donezo, which is fine. Remain my favorite green to grow. More of these ridiculous ranunculus. <laughs> They're so pretty. I love them so much. Then I have some peas back here. These are purple dwarf peas. I planted them in the back because I figured they'd spill out and they're dwarf so they don't get real big or crazy. How pretty is this pea? It's like a dark purple color, so cool. Over here we have some anemones. So these little flowers are. They're super cool. Some lavender, snapdragons, and then I have some sweet potato spilling out the sides. Actually, I planted it in like all the corners of this raised bed. Hey, guess what this is? More yarrow. What do you know? I love my yarrow. And then some oregano, chives, and pineapple sage. Some a tomato, a couple tomatoes in here, and then just some beautiful lettuces. Romaine, a red leaf lettuce, and then some some green onions in here. In this bed I have some broccoli, which is doing beautiful. It's probably going to be producing heads any day now. Kale, lettuce greens. I planted some summer squash in here in these empty spaces and some cucumbers that will spell at the side. And I have some hot peppers, some jalapenos all in this area. Here's our green stock. I do need to feed it. It's looking a little bit nutrient deficient, which makes sense. It's a container, so it needs to be fed a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead feed this guy so that the plants have plenty of nutrients to grow to continue growing i also have some roses like this david austin um which one is this oh gosh i forget the name of it it's so beautiful isn't it this is an a david austin climbing rose here it's gonna climb this trellis eventually one of these days and then on these on this other side i have a tangerine Guys, climbing rose which hasn't bloomed yet but it shouldn't be long and it's gonna climb all the way one day as you can see from my garden I love growing food I love growing flowers and I love growing them together you will see permaculture means that I incorporate a lot of diversity in my garden I like to use a ground cover to protect the soil and to feed the soil also do my best to reduce the amount of work needed to be able to have a thriving garden like mulch to keep me from having to weed as much or water as much and using different organic matter that we have around the property to feed my garden. Hey, that rose bush looks pretty this year, just not as tall. Not, yeah, <laughs> doesn't have the height yet. No.